is up everybody eric here from the orange den garage also known as the tod short and today ladies and gentlemen today is a special day because i'm finally getting a haircut oh my god do i need one yep today's a special day and i'm finally getting a haircut but before we go gonna get a code start on the azera and see how it sounds like a quick rev too while we're at it You hear that? That is nothing. I need to get an exhaust for this thing. Oh my God. I'm ashamed. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. So today's video, I'm gonna be talking talking about the, talking about my old car, my, my old FRS. But uh, before we do that, I'm gonna be going to go get a haircut because I am in desperate need of a haircut, as you all may know. Look at this thing, bro. This one here is wild and terrible. So let me go. We're gonna go to the barber shop quick, and then we're uh, gonna get, get that haircut all situation situation taken care of because this hair is a mess, and I just can't deal with it anymore. All right, let's go. to the barbershop right now because i just got word that i can just pay electronically or by phone so you know that saves me a lot of time and that means i'll be able to get a haircut so you know this, this is fantastic news let's go i would play music but i don't know if i'll get copyrighted so i don't want to play music at least not for now until i figure that out um but yes this video is going to be you know quick not quick it's gonna take a while but either way this video is gonna be about uh my frs and i'm gonna tell you a little story about my frs because if you've seen uh, all our videos or some of our videos most of the time i'm here talking about my uh frs and how uh, i used to have one and the reason as to why I say that, you know, past, past tense as used to, is is a, is a story worth telling from the very beginning to the end. And I will, you know, talk about that more in detail, probably after this haircut. But I also have other things to do today, so I may or may not be able to finish or start it but we'll see. And here we are. We're at my. We're at the barber shop. Now, for those of you that need a barber, uh, I know a spot here in New Britain, and this is where my barber's at. So let me show you where the shop real quick. And here it is. That right there, new image. That is the barber shop. Don't mind Squirtle. He's just hanging out. That is my my guy, my co co uh, co pilot. Squirtle's been. Uh, an OG since my FRS days, so uh, he uh, he's definitely been with me through the craziest of uh, my ride times, and he's seen a lot of shiznats, and uh, so have I. You'd be surprised at the amount of people that don't know how to drive around the state of Connecticut. It's crazy, it really is. But all right, ladies and gentlemen, you, let's get a good look at me before. Cause I'm about to show you the after. Whoosh. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen, your boy is fresh now. Look at this, like, of course, you know, get the little faux hog going over here, but look at the details. Ooh. 
Man, it's been months since I got a haircut, boy. Haven't been looking this fresh in a while. Woo! Damn, boy. New image, everybody. New image in New Britain. That's that's my barber shop. My my barber is uh Abby. Would be wrong. I pronounce it. But yes, look at this. Look at this. My barber is the first one on the left. This is this is all his work. He takes his time. I, that's what I that's what I like about him. He takes his time, and you know most barbers these days rush. Uh, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. I had like something in my. I got so, like, I guess some some sort of hair in my eyes. On, but yes, these barbers be taking me rushing nowadays. But my my barber took his sweet time, and man, it took a while because uh, my appointment was at ten. Now, of course, I got like a couple minutes late, so I ended up finishing just now. It's eleven oh eight now, so it took well, it took an hour because you know your boy had too much hair, and I've been. I've been out of hair. I've been have had so much hair. Wow. I mean, uh, I haven't had a haircut in such a long time. But yes. So now I'm gonna go and uh, I'm gonna be off to the house real quick. I'm gonna pick up the wife. We're about to head out, and uh, so I'll probably talk more about the FRS later. For now, I'm just gonna be spending some time with the wife. Some. Uh, we haven't been able to just uh, go out in a while. Yeah. So just, but look at your boy. Your boy is looking fresh, son. Let's go. God damn, look at me. Woo! Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you in the next, in the next uh, scene. <laughs> What is up, everybody? It's been about a week since I last talked to you all, and my last haircut, you know, was the last Thursday, and this is a new Thursday. And uh, want to say a little bit now about my FRS, and uh, wanted to talk about it. So, my FRS was a 2016 Scion, obviously. You you all know what an FRS is. Uh, 2016 Halo. Uh, pearlescent white and uh, it was a, a six-speed manual and it was a great car now first time that I saw an FRS was when I first started like in my first year of working at the Harford Toyota uh, dealership and I went to go grab uh, a customer car. It wasn't the FRS specifically. It was the. It was just a, a random. I think it was like a Corolla or a Camry back then. Uh, was what I went to go get. And as I go outside, I see this other uh, Halo white FRS in the, the customer parking lot or the, the service lot. I guess I could say. And I, I see it, and I'm, I'm I'm just looking at it, walking around the car, and it, it took my took my attention. It was something that I it's, I couldn't believe. Like I, I've never really been uh, close to any of the ni nice looking cars, and well, when I saw this one, I took a picture of it, and. I just I, I love the look of it. It looked it was nice. It was low, like for the right height. It was already low, but you could lower it even more. It uh, it looked amazing in the sun with that um, pearlescent uh, white color, and um, it, it was just something that uh, I knew that I might I wanted to work hard to get because at the time I was looking for. Uh, either a Dodge Challenger, a Nissan 370Z. Uh, what else was I looking for? I wasn't looking for an SCI or WRX, which, you know, I probably would have ended up with one of those had I known that they were like 26, 27,000, about the same amount for the FRS. It, I would have definitely just copped that instead, but it's something about that FRS that took my attention and, and it, I just fell in love with the car. Uh, so, 
let's see, forward maybe a year later or so. Yeah, about a year later or so. And throughout the time of working there, I'm just seeing, you know, these, this, a bunch of white, this halo white FRS is just coming in the shop for work. Even the ones that we had for sale parked out in the parking lot and it, it's the, it, the car just kept taking my attention. Like I couldn't stop staring at the car. It was amazing. It looked phenomenal. I know it didn't have the power because I was obviously looking up videos on the FRSs and everybody had the same complaint. It's underpowered, but it's still a great car, especially the fact that you can turn it into a drift car, which was pretty dope. I'm not gonna lie, but man, it's, it was a car that took my attention. So after after seeing you know a customer with the uh, with the FRS, I started to think about saving money and and getting one so that I could eventually own one myself because I want after seeing it in. in after just driving it into the shop um, back in 2015, around that time, um, it uh, it really I just liked the feel of it. The, the seats were comfortable. It wasn't like it was um, not for like the big guys, like for me and stuff like that. It was a uh, was an enjoyable seat. It wasn't stabbing me in the sides or anything. I was able to get in without any issues. Uh, none of that stuff so I started saving up money about 5,000 I had on top of that I traded in my old car or the old car that I had that my mom or my parents let me borrow while I was going to work and they let me trade it in uh, so that was like another $1,600 so about about $6,600 or so um, I put into getting a 2016 Halo Pearlescent white FRS and I, I tell you I was excited when I started signing the paperwork and all that for the FRS uh, of course I was told that I could that it was being made in Japan and that it was going to be shipped here in the US not gonna lie that was, it, it was pretty cool hearing that I don't know if it was true or not because it ended up getting a swap from another dealership so whatever that's not the point the point was that around april 15 april 16 of 2016 is when my frs arrived at the dealership well, already pdi'd and everything just waiting it was waiting to see me i guess you could say so I was just at work. It was after work. It was like around six, six thirty. It was after five o'clock after uh, on a Friday night or a Friday afternoon, and I'm there just hanging out with the advisors, talking to them. And next thing I see, uh, and a white FRS just pulls into the middle of the shop, and the salesman comes out and or, and tells me that that's my car. So I was there the moment my car arrived and I was able to take a look at it and just enjoy uh, take a soaking it all in that I finally got my very own car, my first car that I bought with my money and a little bit help with my parents because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have extra thousand so to you know lower down the monthly price uh, of how much I would have to pay for the FRS. And my FRS, was six-speed manual transmission man uh, that was the car that I was able to fully learn how to drive standard and it was my it's my favorite car man like it's it's just it has a special place in my heart because it's my first car and it was the car where uh, I had my personal freedom that I could uh, customize myself because uh, what was it the next day literally the next day I come in in the morning, my boy Alex uh, comes 
with me outside we go and we grab the frs from the from the parking parking lot and we just pull it inside to one of the empty bays at that time and my boy Khan helps hooks me up with by putting in the trd lowering springs that i bought that friday uh the friday before and the car the, the stance of the car changed it was <laughs> it ended up scraping on onto the alignment rack which was uh which was pretty dope because i i couldn't believe that my car was that low to the point where we had to get these blocks so that we can get the alignment set up because you know as soon as you take out the suspension and all that the alignment uh changes so how to do that and it was cool so instead of having the black uh regular springs that it, with the stock height seeing the trd lowering springs on there uh i love the fitment let's be honest the fitment for me was perfect especially just starting off like um owning the car and just getting used to the fact that I have my own personal car that I can call my own and I, I still remember that day like we, we were all joking around we were all laughing and as Khan did did that for me like like he, I didn't even pay him I like I told him like Khan I'm I'll be giving you iced coffee for like the rest of the year now like whenever you want iced coffee I got you because he helped me out it was dope so few months later after owning the car or not even I, I actually that sat, uh, Saturday afternoon as I was finishing the paperwork for my car <laughs> I pull out the dealership with my brother and uh, we're at the light next to next to the dealership and I got state troopers right behind me and I'm freaking out I'm like oh no I'm not I don't want to get a ticket the first ticket on, on my FRS the second I pull out of the dealership and since I was a little, little freaking out a little bit because of that, I stall out. I stall out for the first time in front of the dealership, in front of a state trooper. <laughs> I was embarrassed. It was. It's, it's just hilarious. Like I, I miss that car. I uh, love that car so much. So let's see. A few months passed by. It's the summer of 2016. The parking lot that is being used for uh, a new building here in Harvard Toyota so we had a park on a separate lot and one one summer day on a weekday afternoon me and a couple of advisors are leaving the leaving the second lot that we have here in Harvard and I decided to, to disable traction control and I was just in first gear and there were some cars coming on the opposite side so of course me being the guy with a sports Lord sports car I uh, I dump it in first <laughs> and the rear end kicks out I'm swerving on the side on the road I almost had control of it and then I'm uh, so I like I get to the point where I'm sideways in the middle of the street and I see a telephone pole right in front of me and I flick the steering wheel to my left and I was able to avoid a telephone pole but I ended up on the curb on the sidewalk I mean and I dragged I, I guess like I, I gripped or I grabbed a bunch of dirt on it on the sidewalk that was like the, the grass area of the sidewalk and a few of the plastic clips underneath my front bumper break um, the plastic trims on the bumper pop out like where the side markers are those popped out but I was I was thankful that the car didn't get hurt or anything and the only thing that happened was a little paint crack some broken plastic nothing serious uh that was my that was my first um initial like uh time the first time that I ever had the car just kick out of me out of nowhere because I wasn't expecting that especially with like 200 horsepower like I wasn't expecting that to just happen on on such a low horsepower vehicle and I've 
I have done some spin classes before with the FRS, and I was those, those didn't scare me. But the fact that you know when it happens uninitially, like you weren't expecting it to happen, that, dude, that 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 was heart pounding. I tell you. Uh, let's see what else. What else did I tell you? Oh uh, yeah. So it's the winter time now in CT, and obviously I don't. I didn't have the money to buy a winter beater yet. So instead of uh, parking the car leaving it in the garage for winter I, I said you know <laughs> and started driving the FRS in the, on the snow because I've seen I've seen the videos on online that as long as I had snow tires I'll be straight well the first initial snow happened I wasn't ready for it and I just finished dropping my sister off at, at her bus stop and now I was on my way to work and I was going downhill, the car was sliding. I couldn't, I was like, damn. So I had, I just kept it in first gear, try to keep uh, keep the car under control so that it wouldn't, you know, slip out or anything. And then I got to the point where like, holy crap, like I can't believe that I'm not gonna be able to make it a work because of a thin layer of snow. So I waited a little bit Gave, gave the car some time and then I was like oh, I can't be wasting time I gotta get to work I gotta get the grind going I gotta make sure I got all my bills paid and whatnot so I said I told I was talking to my FRS I'm like all right we can do this I believe in you you got this we can make it to the work and after that little pep talk the FRS started moving I was like yes let's go and then after that one of the advisors uh, hooked me up with some snow tires, some of his used snow tires for an old car that he had. And during that winter, I think I got videos of it on my Instagram. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to see if I can post it on here. I got, I'm just driving down the road, just passing by Subarus and all that, all these all wheel drive, four wheel drive cars, just cruising. I only had the rear wheels with snow tires and that's all I needed at the time. Now if had I had like all four snow tires, I probably would have been able to go a little bit quicker and in, in the snow and enjoy it a little bit more. But uh, I just had the rears and my car was just dominating in the snow. Like, I, <laughs> dude, I was, I was flexing out here with the FRS in the snow while everybody else out here uh, slowing down, being cautious. I'm out here just try, zooming past them, doing 45, 60 or so in the snow. And um, so a couple of days later, you know, uh, more snow starts piling on. I'm at work. I got people, a few people called out. So I'm just hanging out with the guys because like not that many cars were in there anyways. And uh Next thing I know, like we're, we're all just talking because I, I did a, I think I did like one car at, at that time, and I'm um, just hanging out with the, with the with the guys at work. We're just talking, whatever. Started parking some of the cars that were in the lot of the dealership inside, and the Carl at the time, the assistant service manager, asked me if I wanted to go home because it looked like it might be getting worse, and he didn't want me to get stuck. And I was like, well, I have no choice. There's no, there's really nothing going on here. And last thing I need is to get stuck in the snow on my way home. So I'm driving home with the FRS, ha having some fun times with it. And uh, the only time I ever got stuck in the snow with the FRS after having the snow tires was legit in my driveway or at my parents' driveway at the time because it wasn't even, it hadn't been cleaned out or anything. And I, I got home and I got stuck right in the driveway. As soon as the garage doors opened, my brother came out, he helped me push it back inside. And uh, those were some great times. Now, at the end of December, I had bought the TRD air intake for the FRS. I wish I'd made a little video of me installing it and whatnot, but I wasn't, I didn't think we'd be doing YouTube now. 
so I wish now now that I think of it I wish I had so I installed that and uh, took it for a little drive and I could just feel the car responding way quicker than it bef than it did before it, it sounded a little bit more louder too it was great now next month I got me uh, uh sorry I got myself the NVIDIA N1 titanium tip catback exhaust for the FRS. And I had been doing my research, I've been looking around, trying to see what, what's a good um, exhaust, catback exhaust setup I should be doing. And at the time I didn't realize that when I first saw uh, an FRS with that catback exhaust, completely stock, stock catback exhaust, was watching one of TJ Hunt's videos back when he had the BR. Ready? Go. I got the, the that cat bag exhaust because of him and I didn't even realize and after one when, when it took me like an hour or so getting that exhaust on and then it just sounds it sounded so much better um, when I first started it up I guess the neighbor across the street came out trying to see what it was because he he had he works on his own little uh, car at the time He's got like a classic muscle car he had he was working on for a while. So I guess he came out looked trying to see what what the what I was doing, huh? And me and my brother we drove around with the exhaust trying to see how it sounded, downshifting, just you know, doing full sends and all that. The car sounded amazing with the TRD exhaust uh, TRD air intake. It just sounded it was good fast it was lightweight now because the stock exhaust was heavy so the FRS was definitely moving a lot quicker than it used to and it just sounds amazing bro that, that was the end of uh, 2016 to, or the beginning of 2017 is when I put the exhaust and later that year I've got tints for the car so I got tints I got the cat back exhaust got the air intake got the lowering springs I was like my bill like my build is coming along nicely slowly but surely and i wanted to do the next thing i wanted to do once i bought the, the tents was definitely try to see if i can get like the uh open flash tablet tuned and then eventually buy um some borla unequal length headers because i wanted that subaru rumble boy because it, it's a subaru it's just like the inside is just a subaru so I wanted, I was trying to get a tune, get the bo uh, unequal length headers, Borla's unequal length, yeah, unequal length headers uh, for the car. And it was definitely, it was gonna, it was gonna be sounding nice. Like I, I knew it was. Like I was just, uh, I just needed more time and money. But uh, unfortunately I just didn't have the time nor the money. So, you know, because life happens and it just gets difficult for uh, for some people. I was just trying to do what I could. And with, with what I had. And I just wanted, uh, I was just, you know, doing things like uh, just life. Uh, met my wife back in 2017. Started talking to her. Finally went out. Um, then towards the what was it the following year um is when is when i had to say goodbye to my frs it was on a what was it september it was in september when i believe 
a terrible rainstorm, thunderstorm, flood of the streets here in CT. And I was driving home to pick up my my uh, girlfriend, soon to be wife. Um, not my fiance, but yeah, my fiance, soon to be wife uh, from her job. And I didn't realize how deep the water was. Drove right into it. The FRS got stuck. And when I went to downshift to try to power through, unfortunately, it sucked in too much water and it, uh, it died, I guess. I mean, it technically didn't die, but it just, I drowned the car. So the following day I call a tow Brought it to the dealership, waited a couple days for somebody to come take a look to see if there was anything they could do um, to get it fixed. Insurance considered it total because the motor cost more than the car itself. And three days later, I think, three days later, I had to say my final goodbyes. There was still so much I wanted to do with the car. I still love the car. It just it just has a place in my heart. It's just it's hard because there was so much, so many more things I wanted to do with the car, and so many more adventures that I wanted to go on that I wasn't able to do. But if it wasn't for that, I guess I wouldn't be able to do. I couldn't do some of the things that I was able to do when I didn't have my FRS and it is what it is you know there's everything happens for a reason but it sucks just, there are just some things in life that sucks and it, you just have to suck it up so I'm gonna miss that car and I'm I hope to actually buy it hopefully maybe in the future get another one i really do it, 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 it it's not going to be the same because it wasn't my frs my first frs brand new but i hope hope this channel grows and i can envision my dreams and maybe get another one if not maybe a supra <laughs> maybe a supra who knows but uh there's there's a couple cars that I would love to have and it's getting my FRS back or at least another one having a Supra the legendary Supra definitely would love to own a Lamborghini Huracan because now I've seen other youtubers with that video and I'm starting to like the Huracan like no offense to the Aventador or any of the V12s uh Lambos but there's just something about that Huracan that just looks nice. I like the way it looks. It's pretty aggressive V10. And another car I would love to have is definitely a Ferrari. A 458. Spider maybe, because heavy. why not? A supercar drop top, definitely. I would love to have one of those. But, yeah. but uh, that was just a quick story on the FRS. I'm pretty sure it probably took a while. I don't know. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, depending on how long the video is. Hopefully it's not too long, but um, thank you guys for uh, taking the time to watch this, this story, story of uh, my FRS, and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day or night, depending on when you watch this video, but uh, take care, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, out here in the Orange Den Garage, TODG, we like to try to envision our dreams, because that's what we try to do here, is to envision our dreams. So hopefully I can envision my dream on getting another FRS back. Hopefully getting a Supra, maybe a Lambo, maybe a Ferrari. Who knows? You know, but you got to envision your dreams. And you got to try to do your best to make it possible to get the things that you would want in life. And uh, take care, everybody.